Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. Today we'll be focused on the lives of some of the Carolina's finest emergency services personnel. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This week we're visiting with some emergency services personnel from all over the Carolinas. And today we're at Fire Station 1 here in the city of Florence, and we're visiting with Robinson County Sheriff Glenn Maynard. Sheriff Maynard, thanks for being with us. Good to be with you. Good it's to be with wonderful. You. Thanks for making the commitment to drive down this morning from Robinson. Yes, sir. How long have you been sheriff in Robinson County? Uh, this is my eighth year, come December. Okay. Yes, sir. Are you a uh, are you a native Robinsonian? Yes, sir. That's my home. I was born and raised in uh, in great county, a great state of Robinson. It is a big county. I think uh, I live in O'Ree County, and a lot of our viewers in O'Ree County and, and uh, the, the surrounding Myrtle Beach and Conway. And of course, we're, we're here in the PD. Ro yes, uh, O'Ree is a huge county. How large is uh, Robinson County? Robinson is the largest in the state. Of course, Sampson debate us on that. A lot uh, land-wise, we're the largest, 946 square miles. That causes the sheriff's office to be pretty dang busy, I'm yes, sure. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. How many law enforcement officers are there in the uh, sheriff's department? We have 86 uh, sworn officers that's actively on duty, mm -hmm. and we have uh, 12 that is uh, auxiliary officers. But uh, we have four different squads, and usually nine on each squad as far as the uniform patrol that's actually patrolling the county and answering calls. Okay. And do you mind me asking, in Robinson County, is the sheriff's position, is that an elected office? Yes, sir. Every, every four years, uh, we're elected. In fact, it's that all across our state, and all of us are up for election at the same time. Basically. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's amazing. How long have you been involved in public safety? Uh, for quite a while, I served as a member of the Lumpton City Council for 19 years, and I was chairman of the Public Safety Committee. And I was a police officer in Lumberton in the late 60s and early 70s for mm -hmm. about five years. So it's been in my heart. I was a former probation parole officer and a driver's license examiner. So I've been involved in public safety and law enforcement really for about uh, 25 to 30 years. Son of a gun. Was there anything in particular that pulled you into law enforcement? I guess that long, yeah, that's about as long as you've been around. Well, uh, I'm a caring person. I'm a, a Christian and I care about people. And uh, the sheriff's position is a, a position of, of care, and you have to care about people. You have to be dedicated to helping people mm -hmm. if you serve in that capacity. And uh, that plus the law enforcement background I was raised in. My father was a, a constable. And back in those days, a constable worked close with the sheriff's department. And as an early child, you know, that was exciting to me, you know, to see dad with a badge and a gun and whatever. But growing up and getting involved in politics and learning the, the system and uh, still having law enforcement on my mind, mm -hmm. then uh, I, I decided several years ago that I'd like to, to run for sheriff and see if I can win the position. And with good Lord's help, we did. You definitely did. It, could you tell the viewers a little bit about <clears throat> exactly the responsibilities of the sheriff's office? I know earlier this week we had Sheriff Thompson from Horry County. Yes. Later we're going to have Sheriff Greg here in Florence County. Yes, sir. But in Robinson County, the responsibilities are... Uh, we are the chief law enforcement officer of the county. Mm -hmm. We're responsible for all the civil papers that serve. We are responsible for security uh, at the county complexes, particularly at our courthouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've heightened the security there, and which we'll go into later on some things we've done. Uh, and uh, we're responsible for uh, uh, the jail, the detention okay. center. We, mm -hmm. we max out about 412. I think we had about 435 in there when I left home this morning. Oh. So it's a... Uh, it's a situation where that fluctuates uh, depending on how many we rest for child support or or, or, or or any other thing that we might have a raid on, where it be drugs or whatever. But anyway, that's basically what the responsibility of the sheriffs are, is, mm -hmm. to, uh, is to protect and serve, but overall the responsibilities of, of the county. We have jurisdiction all over the county, but where they have municipalities set up, cities or towns that has their corporate uh, law enforcement agencies, we assist them if they call, but other than that, we pretty much just worry about the county, which is composed of about 80,000 
individuals that's not in the corporate limits. That are not in city or corporate limits. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's a huge, uh, that's a heck of a lot of people. Yes, for 946 square miles, that's pretty, pretty mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. Tell me about any additional changes that you've made to be more prepared for any future events like what happened a year ago. Well, it's, uh, I've always believed in the philosophy that it's better to be safe than to be sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have, we've got a very successful drug interdiction program and drug program in our county where we receive monies back. In fact, uh, uh, I did a news release this morning where we received back $364,000 in drug asset monies. Mm. And we take those monies and, and implement them for law enforcement purposes. What we've done with those monies is uh, we purchased a drug, uh, a bum sniffing dog, mm -hmm. uh, because we have a lot of bum threats in our schools mm -hmm. and at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. So we've bought metal detectors and whatever to heighten security at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got our officers more on alert. And we've also uh, purchased recently a mobile 911 unit. Mm -hmm. It's a bus uh, that has uh, been used by medical clinic and it's in good shape, excellent shape, and we got it at an excellent, excellent price. Mm -hmm. And we took uh, $40,000 of monies and, and didn't use taxpayers' money. We took drug asset monies. And this is going to be a 911 backup in case our 911 system goes down, in case we'll have a terrorist attack or any kind of, uh, uh, any kind of alert where we feel like this unit needs to be used for any emergency services. Sheriff Maynard, how, long, how, how much have... How have our lives changed over the last 12 months since the terrorist attacks? Well, dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, people are, are more uh, alert now mm -hmm. than they were at one time. Mm -hmm. they, they're more suspicious now, and they're more, I think, cautious now. Mm -hmm. Because we learned from that that we can expect anything of any consequences at any time. And so with that in mind, people uh, have the, the little thought in the back of their mind to be careful and be safe. And still with that happening, we, we, we still are not always safe enough. No, you're not. Can I ask you real quickly, are, are jailed populations being screened for possible ties to terrorist organizations? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. when, uh, when, when individuals come in, uh, we, we check them more closely. We, with the background check, uh, with our computers and whatever, to make sure that, uh, that there weren't any kind of connection, you know, not just in our county, in our state, but anywhere in the nation because you just don't know when you've got an individual in there that might be connected to some kind of terrorist group. Can I ask you real quick if there's any accomplishment in particular that you're most proud of this past year? Uh, I'd say any accomplishment that we have been proud of this last year is the situation of, is, of people working together. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some additional training for our officers to make them more alert on, on uh, uh, any kind of uh, situation that concerns emergency services, and the county as a whole are more, are, are more alert than they ever have been before. Thank you, Sheriff Maynard. A man who's been involved in law enforcement almost his entire life, a man growing up who's, who saw a badge on his father. And that commitment starts at a young age, goes forward in a caring manner. And we thank you so much, Sheriff Maynard, for being with us today. Good to be here with you. Sure, definitely. Thank you. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming up next. Good morning, welcome back to Carolina People. This week we've been visiting with some of the finest emergency services personnel in the Carolinas. And today we're visiting with Robinson County's EMS director, James Hall. James, thanks for being with us. Nice to be here. This is a great commitment of you to drive on down from Robinson County this morning to be here in Florence. Have you been to Fire Station 1 before? No, sir, I never have. I'm, I'm down in this area occasionally, but I've never been by here. Okay. Have you, uh, have you, how long have you been in Robinson County? All my life. Uh, I was born and raised in Robinson County. The county is so large. When folks think about Robinson, I guess they think folks outside of Robinson County, they think of I-95, they think of UNC Pembroke, they think of the city of Lumberton, but there's so many communities, St. Paul's and Fairmont. I mean, it's such a huge, uh, geographically, it must be one of the biggest counties in North Carolina. Yes, sir. It, as a matter of fact, it, uh, mile-wise, square miles, it is the largest county in North mm. Carolina. Um, I think Robinson and Sampson County are right there together, but there's a few miles difference, but it is considered the largest county in North Carolina. Yes, sir. How long have you been in, in, how long have you been the EMS director in Robinson County? 
I've been the EMS director since 1989. I began with the service in 1974. 74? 1974, Much yes, of your life. Yes, sir. All of my adult life, as All a matter of fact. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, sir. Could you talk for a second just briefly about what EMS is exactly? I, I know most viewers probably know exactly what EMS is. I, I really uh, would be interested emergency? Emergency medical service. Okay. Um, we used to be called an ambulance service, Robinson County Ambulance Service, mm -hmm. and then after the upgrade in training, it was more appropriate to use the word medical service uh, because of the advanced training and the um, difference in the level of care to the patients we were providing. It was more appropriate to be considered a medical service. Mm -hmm. How many, the, the, the amazing when folks think about serving a county that large, how many miles per month do you think the uh, EMS professionals are traveling. Yeah, we do a monthly report on the miles on the ambulances and we, we uh, operate six ambulances per day. Mm -hmm. That's on a 24-hour basis mm -hmm. and we have two what we call QRVs. This is where we put a paramedic in a car mm -hmm. and place them in certain areas where we don't have a unit and they respond to calls in that area and uh, provide care to the patient until we can get a transport unit there. Mm -hmm. But the average miles per month driven in Robinson County uh, by emergency vehicles or our department is 53,000. 53,000? Yes, sir. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this morning I looked at the report for August and the miles driven was 57,000. Oh, Lord. Sure. That's amazing. Is that, do, could you just talk for a second exactly what the EMS director does? I'm overall responsible for all pre-hospital care in the county. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm responsible for paramedics. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, as of uh, January, uh, the state has mandated that we will re be responsible for all volunteers also. We have to monitor their training. Um, inspect their vehicles. So mm -hmm. as of January, we're responsible for volunteers as well as the paid personnel in That'll the county. Be a huge commitment. How many, do you have an idea about how many volunteers there are in the county? We have um, eight volunteer rescue squads. I don't know the exact number of personnel per squad, but we have eight rescue squads in the uh, larger areas in the mm -hmm. county. And they're a tremendous asset to us mm -hmm. because they, they assist us with wrecks. Um, they also do some transport in their areas when our trucks are tied up. Mm -hmm. So we would really hate to be without them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If someone in Robinson County or in adjoining counties, obviously you're talking specifically about Robinson, but if someone wanted to be involved in EMS, how would they get involved? Someone wanted to volunteer. Someone wanted to uh, to become a uh, a professional. We're we're fortunate in Robinson County because we have so many who volunteer, mm -hmm. and they they gain that interest there, and then they uh, attend the basic level, which is the EMP level training mm -hmm. um, out at Robinson Community College, mm -hmm. and then they uh, advance to the intermediate level, uh, and then usually. They come on board with us either as a part-time uh, employee or full-time at the paramedic level. But uh, we're fortunate because we have so many volunteers. We have a pool all the time mm -hmm. uh, that we can pull from, and we have a vacancy. So it's you have three levels: uh, the basic level, which is EMT. EMT. I think that's like a six-month course. Mm -hmm. It's offered twice a year, and then we have the intermediate level, which uh, usually continues from the basic training. They go right into intermediate, which is another eight months approximately. Mm. And then um, after maybe a year, they go into paramedic school. Now that's an 18 month training period, uh, extremely detailed. Mm. The paramedics um, are, they have a lot of responsibility. They make a lot of decisions. Golly, a yes. lot of decisions that affect people. and. Uh, there's constant training every month they're in school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're under what's called medical control, mm -hmm. which means there's a medical director monitoring all activities of the department. Mm -hmm. um, 
he's in our department once a month, our medical director, and he reviews all records and uh, the treatment that was rendered to patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's closely monitored. Mm -hmm. And everything is done based on protocol. Is there anything you'd like to see improved in the uh, EMS, I'm sure there's, there's so many things going on. Obviously, this undertaking to oversee volunteers in the very near future will be a huge commitment. Is there anything in particular that would help within the county to help uh, EMS, uh, EMS Al? Well, we're paramedic. You know, is the ultimate level of care in the field, and we have achieved that. Uh, we, we're on demand. That's mm -hmm. that's our mm -hmm. biggest problem. So volunteers are very important. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we're on demand as far as um, personnel. But everyone's having that problem right now. Now, it would be nice if we could eventually uh, add a couple of trucks to mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. coverage mm -hmm. uh, to take some of the load off the paramedics who are there. Because let me give you an example. Last, I think it was last Friday, um, I looked at the stats for a 12-hour period, and those six trucks answered 60 calls. 60 calls. Yes, sir. And there's an an average of 45 minutes spent on each call. Mm. That's that's about the quickest they can uh, transport a patient and get the patient off the truck. For a man who on a daily basis has to think about trucks averaging 60 calls a day, a man who's been involved with EMS since 1974 and has served as its director since 1989, James Hall, thank you so much for being with us today. It's my pleasure, sir. Very definitely. We'll be back with more Carolina people coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This week we're visiting with emergency services personnel from all over the Carolinas. We're at Fire Station 1 here in the city of Florence, and today we're visiting with Robinson County Fire Marshal Charles Britt. That's Charles, great. thanks so much for being with us. Nice to be with you. Great day. Thanks for making the commitment to drive down from Robinson County. It was a nice day to drive down. It's it finally quit raining. <laughs> it sure it has. It has. How long have you been in Robinson County? Uh, I was born and raised in Robinson County. Uh, I've been a volunteer fireman since 1972 in the county. Um, we've, uh, I've been employed with Robinson County since 1985. Uh, I was promoted to fire marshal in 1987, and I've served in that capacity with the county since 1987. Since 1987. That's correct. And there's just one fire marshal in Robinson County? Uh, only one fire marshal, and uh, I handle uh, the inspections and uh, fire investigations and things like that that are in the unincorporated areas of the county. Okay. However, we do help some of the small towns if they do call for any assistance as far as inspections or um, investigations of fires. We, our office also helps in that. I understand that Robinson County has one of the largest number of incorporated cities or towns in the state of North Carolina, if not in the southeast. Yeah, we have more uh, fire districts in, North, in Robinson County than any other state or any other county in North Carolina. We have uh, 36 fire districts that are served by 32 different fire departments. Uh, some fire departments serve two where they're, uh, for instance, if they're in a small town, they might serve that small town and also a rural district also. So okay. that's how some of them serve two. And you said you began your career in fire service in? In 72. In 72. Uh -huh. And in 85, you became a so were you a volunteer prior? I was a volunteer prior to that. And I uh, was in a business, uh, self-employed up until the time that I started with the county in 85. Okay. What prompted your interest in, uh, in firefighting? Well, as I said, I started out as a volunteer and I really enjoyed it. And uh, the door just opened up, you know, to start as an inspector with the county. And I did that uh, and, and enjoyed it. And from there, just, just moved on up. Can you tell viewers about the uh, uh, the division or the division in Robinson County? How the fire marshal is uh, what it oversees and uh, okay. the responsibilities therein. We oversee uh, the inspections of all the occupancies uh, such as daycare centers, rest homes, uh, the public schools, uh, anything like that inside the county. We do those inspections. Uh, we also do fire investigations if a rural fire department has any problems or with a fire that they need some assistance on, uh, we help with that. If there's a fatality or injury, our office is called, um, and we help with that investigation 
through law enforcement and our office. Usually we help with the uh, cause and origin of the fire and then law enforcement helps uh, in the arrest end of it. But as far as cause and origin, we usually handle pretty much all the cause and origin if a department needs some help with that. How important are volunteers to your division? In our department, or in our county, they're, they're very important. Uh, we have, uh, as I said, 36 fire districts and 32 of those uh, fire departments and only one in the county is paid and that is the city of Lumberton. Mm. The, uh, we have a total of around 870 firefighters in the county. 870? Right. Mm. And uh, of those, there's approximately a little better than 820 are volunteer firemen. So we have a lot of volunteers in the county as, as far as that. Uh, mm. You know, but uh, we have a lot of stations also, as I did say. Mm -hmm. If someone wanted to volunteer for service, volunteer to be a firefighter, how would they go about doing that? Uh, if there was anybody interested in the county, they could uh, contact my office and I could, if they didn't know the fire chief or which fire district they were in, I could let them know, uh, put them in contact with the chief of, the, of that department in their area and, and they could make contact with them about making an application to their department. Okay. What number, Do you mind me asking the number they okay. call? Okay. They could call my office at uh, area code 910-671-3152. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just that easy. Well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Obviously, our focus this week has been on the events that affected us a year ago, mm -hmm. not only as a nation, but in the Carolinas, in Robinson County, uh, throughout southeastern North Carolina. Is there an events that have impacted the fire service in, in Robinson County in particular, how have those events impacted the fire service? Uh, it's brought the fire service closer to get. The fire service has always been a pretty close-knit group. Uh, I think that the uh, events of 9-11 have uh, brought it closer together. Uh, I think it's made the public more aware also of mm -hmm. just what firefighters do, whether they're paid or whether they're volunteers. Obviously, viewers, we're in a, a live fire station here, Fire Station 1 in Florence, uh, visiting with the Robson County Fire Marshal, Charles Britt. Charles, thank you again for being with us. In, um, is there any particular accomplishment that you're most proud of over the past year? Uh, most of our fire departments, there are several of them that have, uh, that have been lowering their uh, ISO ratings or working to do that. Um, I'm, I'm proud of them for doing that for the simple reason that it gives the citizens of that district a break on their homeowner's insurance by uh, being in a lower insurance district. Okay. Uh, and there's several departments that have worked hard to, to do that, and that's, that's one thing that really helps the public is when they can save money. And uh, any time they lower their fire insurance rating, it does, you know, help as far as that's concerned. Mm -hmm. Is there, is there, I know this is a tough question, Charles, but I was wondering if there was an opportunity if you weren't the fire marshal of Robinson County, what do you think you'd be doing? I don't really know. I enjoy it. Uh, and uh, I've been doing it so long now that I just can't really imagine doing anything else. A man who's been in, in service since 1972 and mm -hmm. and, uh, and directly, uh, not, not even as a volunteer that entire time, to have been uh, hired on in 1985. It's a yeah. great commitment. Is there, is there something that you do in particular uh, on a day-to-day -day basis that is something that uh, helps interact with children as the fire marshal or their activities that you... Well, our county also has a, uh, a fire safety house that we implement uh, throughout the year, but especially during fire prevention week. Uh, and we bring kids in, or, or they do, and, and show them how to uh, safely evacuate from our house once, you know, smoke uh, is pumped in and uh, the fire uh, alarm system goes off and it teaches them how to get out of a house, mm -hmm. uh, how to you know get down and crawl low and, and make an exit. That really is uh, enjoyable knowing that you know you don't ever know when they might have to put that in, into use and mm -hmm. uh, that's one good thing that we do. Too. Charles, what do you do in the morning to prepare for the day? Uh, pretty much just get up and uh, have a little breakfast and that's pretty much it. It's there. <laughs> A man who's been in fire service since 1972 and has been the fire marshal since 1987. We salute you. Charles Thank Britt, thanks for your service. Thank you. Absolutely. We'll be back with more Carolina people coming up next. Thank you for tuning in to Carolina people this morning. 
we truly want to thank our host fire station number one here in the city of Florence.